There are more than 350 types of sharks, and they have prowled the Earth's oceans for more than 400 million years. Justified or not, most people instinctively fear sharks. But what if sharks could one day be trained to work as our helpers and protectors? The U.S. military thinks they can be. Specifically, the planners at DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. DARPA's vision? A squad of sharks gliding silently through the water, outfitted with sensors to detect explosives or the rumblings of a submarine. All this information could be transmitted back to Central Command. But before sharks could be useful as spies, there had to be a way to guide them to specific areas of the ocean. That's when DARPA turned to Yella Adama, a Boston University professor of biology and researcher at the BU Marine Program. The DARPA approached me to ask, is it possible to have an animal carry sensors in the environment? The problem, of course, is that, like any animal, it is hard to control. With domesticated animals, we have done this for thousands of years, but sharks are not domesticated, and so this has to be done in wild animals. Professor Adama has spent years researching how marine animals use their sense of smell. He knows that sharks use their sense of smell to find their way around the ocean, in particular, to find their way to prey. What I proposed would be to suggest to it that it is smelling an odor source at a distance. And since sharks are tracking odor plumes very well, we know that, we would have to create in the shark the image of an odor plume. Sharks have very large noses, which are flushed by water in a very interesting process, so that these noses have an enormous surface area in the head of the animal much larger, relatively speaking, than what we have, but of course similar to what dogs have, for instance. They need to generate a current to go through the nose simply to get the molecules. But that's not necessarily a good flow sensor, so around the nose they also have very fine detectors for flow. And this is a system called the lateral line. The lateral line is a system that allows the animal to feel movements in its environment. It's a, a system of cells um, that are very much like the cells in the human inner ear and they can detect fluid movements. But in a fish or a shark, for example, it's more or less exposed to the environment and they can feel water movements around them. So they could detect prey, tell which direction the water is flowing around them. We set up a large flume tank, so it has near laminar flow, um, has about an eight meter working area. And so the water is flowing in one direction and you can set up um, these odors that are coming into the tank and generate turbulence within these odor plumes. And then watch how the sharks are able to track them when they have all of their senses and when they're missing one or two or three of those senses. We discovered pretty quickly that the flow detection is indeed a critical aspect of the shark's orientation capabilities. So we set up an experiment where we separated the flow from the odor. So we have a source of odor and then subsequently a source of turbulence. And it turns out they're more interested in a brick that generates turbulence with odor in it than a little further up the source of the pure odor, which should be really the, the source of the food that they're hunting for. Once Professor Adama understood more about how sharks track odor in water, his next task was to use that information to actually steer a shark. So one experiment was that we intubated both sides uh, of the nose, left and right, and delivered tiny little pulses of a squid juice. And these little odor pulses had the effect that the shark would make turns while tracking a real odor plume. And so in a way we could steer the shark by these little odor pulses in the nose. The third approach was to go for electrical stimulation of the brain. And since that requires enormous knowledge of the fine structure of the shark's brain and of the kinds of stimulation patterns that are normally going on in there, uh, I decided to take a shortcut. I made an educated guess that if we could get some effect of a general stimulus, a reasonable physiological stimulus in the direction of the area where the, where the odor is processed, both on the left and on the right, that we may be able to already uh, get some indication that this electrical stimulation will work. And to my surprise, actually, it did work. I think the vertebrate animals are, are very interesting. Certainly animals that are a little bit more mobile have a lot of interesting behaviors that we can look at. Sharks in general, there's so much misinformation out there and, and so little that is really well understood, um, particularly when it comes to the senses of these animals. It's definitely an, an area where there's a lot of work to be done. With the year of DARPA funding now at an end, Adama is seeking new funding to continue his research. 
with potential non-military uses in mind, such as using sharks to track ocean temperature changes or the spread of pollution. So the current state of knowledge that we have generated with this one year of funding is that we know that the lateral line, the flow detectors, are critical components of the shark searching capabilities. We also know that odor pulses can already by themselves provide some steering. We also know that electrical stimulation of olfactory areas can cause some form of steering. What we have not done is really understood precisely what the normal processing is in the brain of the shark, which we would then have liked to mimic in more specific ways, with probably much better and long-term success.